Hello, welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphones are off so the panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening today. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you sign up for this one. And this pres presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Well, I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation from the representative from Loyola University, Chicago. Hi, good evening. My name is Victoria Hogel. I'm an assistant director of undergraduate admission at Loyola University, Chicago. Unfortunately, I don't have a slide today. My computer crashed earlier and I haven't quite gotten it all back up yet. Um, but today I'm going to talk a little bit about Loyola University, Chicago, um, the admission experience and what to expect if this is a school that you're thinking about. So Loyola University, Chicago is a private um, nonprofit Catholic Jesuit institution located in downtown Chicago. We're actually in one of the furthest north neighborhoods called Rogers Park. Um, Loyola University of Chicago is built up of eight different schools for your varying majors. Most of our students um, are either part of our School of Business, our College of Arts and Sciences, or our School of Social Work, which is one of our more popular programs. Loyola University Chicago does rolling admission, which means that we have two different start dates and we review our applications when we get them. We admit students for both the fall and the spring semester. Students who are looking to apply for the fall should have their application submitted by June 1st, um, while students looking to apply for the spring should have their application submitted by December 1st. Students application for admission is also their scholarship application. So when you are ready to apply, you'll submit your free online application and official transcripts from any college or university you've attended. While that's all we need for admission, students can also submit resumes, letters of recommendation, or essays so that the admission committee can have a better understanding of you as a student. Once we get your admission application, we'll start the review process. We would expect the review process to take about two weeks once we've started reviewing for that term. So for example, if you wanna apply for the fall, we're already reviewing that. So if you submitted all of your documents today, we would have all of that information back to you in two weeks. Um, if you are looking to apply for the spring, our application usually opens up in the middle of summer and we'd start making those decisions in October. After you're admitted, you'll get your admission decision and your scholarship award. Loyola University Chicago does have many different merit scholarships for transfer students. Our scholarships would include um, merit-based scholarships based on your previous academic experience, which would range from $12,000 to $22,000 per year. And again, your application for admission is that scholarship application. In addition to our merit-based scholarships, we do have scholarships for PTK members, which would stack onto your merit scholarship. We have scholarships for um, Chicago Star Scholars, which would stack as well. And then we do have a number of available scholarships for the fall as well, in addition to our merit-based scholarships. Those additional fall scholarships are um, external applications. And once you're admitted, you'll start receiving information about those additional scholarships. Like I said, once you get your admission decision, you'll also know your merit-based scholarship. And from there, you'd really start working heavily with our admission counselors to make sure that we're gonna be the right fit for you. It's important to us that we're both a good fit academically and financially for all the students that come through Loyola. That means that we're going to go over all of your transfer credits and make sure you understand exactly what's coming to us and what's still remaining in your degree program. Loyola is extremely transfer friendly. So if you've taken college level credit that you passed um, in the United States from an accredited institution, you would expect to get some type of credit for that. Two weeks after you're admitted, we create a transfer credit summary that details all of the courses that you took and how that comes to us. And then one of your advisors, myself, Michael Arasto, would actually go over that with you so that you understand exactly where you stand um, within your program and within the university. And you can tell about how long it would take you to finish that program. Loyola University of Chicago is part of the Illinois Articulation Initiative. So completion of that Associate of Arts or Associate of Science would complete your university core curriculum with the exception of your mission related requirements. From there, we would look through everything you took and figure out where, 
how many courses you have towards your major and your school as well. Students at community colleges can bring up to 64 credits to Loyola um, and a general degree is a minimum of 120 credits. So we would expect students with an associate degree to need about 56 credits to graduate, which is approximately two years. If you've attended another university before, there's no limit to how many credits you can bring to us, but you would need to take the last 45 credits uninterrupted at Loyola. So we would expect you to be here for at least three semesters. Along with your transfer credit summary discussion, we'd also wanna talk about your finances. I mentioned already that there are a lot of scholarships available based on Merit, PTK, Chicago Star Scholars. So about two weeks after your admission, you'll also get that financial aid award letter, which is going to outline all of your scholarships, any grant funding and any loan funding that we're able to um, secure for you. Um, when you get your financial aid award letter, you'll have another conversation with your admission counselor about what that means for your bottom line. The cost of attendance at Loyola is just about $62,000 a year, including room and board, but we wanna make it as affordable for you as possible. So that financial aid award letter will actually break down all the different types of awards we can get for you and what your bottom line is. So what does it look like for you as a student um, in order to be coming to Loyola? Um, like I said, we wanna make sure that you're both academically and financially a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you. So you'll meet with your counselor a lot and we're going to make those recommendations for you. All right, I know we're just about out of time. I don't see any questions in my Q&A section, um, but if anybody has questions, you can type them in there. Okay, um, I don't see any, so I'm just gonna put my email in the chat here. If you have questions after, by all means, feel free to reach out to me either by email or by phone. Thank you very much. I will reiterate the Q&A is where you can ask questions of any of our reps and you can do that at any time. If it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Dominican University. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, let me share my screen. I have a presentation and um, <clears throat> well, I have to say, uh, that uh, Victoria from Loyola did an amazing job of, of summarizing a lot of key points that uh, I could very well say about Dominican University. Dominican University is a small Catholic institution. Uh, we are located in River Forest, Illinois, near Oak Park, about 10 miles west of downtown Chicago. We've been in River Forest for almost a century, and we've been around since 1901. We started life up in Cincinnati, Wisconsin. Um, but much of what Victoria said is also true about Dominican, that Dominican University uh, is on rolling admission and we, we have scholarships that are awarded automatically to students upon admission, merit-based and Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, Dominican has a little over 3000 students for total enrollment, uh, grad, undergrad, transfer, adult. Um, so this slide points out that Dominican is uh, very accessible for our students. We have about a 10 to one student faculty ratio. Uh, when we are in session and Dominican is about 40% about in session you know, on campus uh, for this past year, we do have an average class size of about 15 students. Uh, so we've always maintained you know, very small, comfortable class sizes. Um, hundreds of, of collaborations with uh, students and professors, a lot of great opportunities for research. Uh, and the way that we're able to, to foster those relationships is because we don't have a single lecture hall at Dominican University. Our, our, our largest class is probably about 30 students and that would be more of the introductory level courses in, in most of our 50 plus majors at Dominican. We are a liberal arts institution, so we offer a little bit of everything in terms of business, education, nutrition, science, nursing, uh, areas like that. A bit of our profile from the past year, uh, from the 2021 school year, we had about 465 incoming freshmen, which was down a little bit from previous years, but we've been averaging about this number over the past five years. 176 new transfer students in the fall of 2020 was our second highest transfer enrollment. Uh, the previous year we had 204. Um, so it was an amazing year and considering things with uh, the way life, um, kind of 
bottomed out with COVID, we, we feel we did pretty well. We were on par to, to, to better 2019, but then things kind of leveled off. And this year we're looking good as well. Uh, the total enrollment as of now, like I said, about 3,189. Um, we expect the number to be about the same uh, as, as, we, as we move forward into 2021. Um, seven, almost 70% students of color at Dominican. We are an extremely diverse campus. Um, and we are also an HSI, we're an Hispanic serving institution. So we are very proud of that designation. Um, and going along with that, about 37% of our students are first generation college students. Our faculty and staff are quite aware of that in, in terms of working with prospective students as well as students in the classroom. And we have 14 plus nations represented within a given year. So again, that just speaks to the diversity uh, that Dominican fosters. <clears throat> One of the things that we like to talk about at the university is location. Uh, we are we are very close to Chicago, but we're not in the city. Um, and, and later on, I'll be able to talk a little bit about a fun fact that, that, that kind of speaks to this. Um, but it says here, a short walk from campus puts you in the heart of Oak Park, Illinois, wonderful suburb, very old suburb of Chicago. Uh, you take the free campus shuttle to the Green Line and zip downtown to, uh, I'm sorry, to downtown Chicago in just 20 minutes. So you see all the wonderful things that are at your fingertips, um, but you are in a very nice residential uh, suburb of Chicago. So um, there, there's there's some comfort in that. There, there's there's a, the simplicity and the peace, uh, and the tranquility of the suburbs in the midst of what, what Chicago has to offer as well. Uh, what this slide points to is that our faculty are really more than just teachers in the classroom. Um, they're not hiding behind lecterns. They love their students to, to take the, uh, the education they get in the classroom out into the real world, whether it's doing some sort of an internship or some sort of uh, uh, experience where they get to be uh, you know, on site as, as this picture illustrates right here. Also the faculty, as we said earlier, um, in terms of research opportunities, the faculty, um, love working with our students and at the end of the year we have this very large uh, uh, situation where we get students and faculty to share their research and our students have even gotten opportunities to travel uh, and, and present their research no matter what your major you can participate in a research project with a faculty member um, again getting back to chicago who says you can't see the stars in the city? Dominican University is known as, as the stars. And this is just a, a small list of some of the places where we, we've sent our interns over the past few years. Great variety, right? We've got sports with the Chicago Blackhawks, the Ernest Hemingway Foundation in Oak Park. Uh, it's very, very tied to Oak Park, very tied to our community. Field Museum, uh, the office of uh, US Senator Dick Durbin, et cetera. So our students do get out there and, uh, get their hands dirty, so to speak, uh, taking their classroom learning out into the real world. Tied to that, we have career development opportunities. We foster this from day one. Whether you're a transfer or an incoming freshman, we want you to get involved with career services to put your resume together, to get your job uh, interview skills in order, and to make sure that you're going to be ready to go when the time comes, okay? We have plenty of sports, NCAA Division III, as well as clubs and organizations. Lots of opportunities at a small school like Dominican to, to start a club if you don't see one. Okay, and the best news of all, we were voted for the second year in a row the best value in Chicagoland uh, for 2021 U.S. News and World Report ranking. We are the number one school. This is based on the quality of education and the size of the classes and other services we offer in addition to tuition. <laughs> tuition and fees, 46,000 a year. Tuition fees, room and board, 46,000 a year. That's Dominican University. Thank you very much. And I will remind everyone, if you have questions, use the Q&A button to share that information or to ask your question rather. And uh, then you can um, aim it directly at a representative by just naming the school in your question. Up next, let's hear from Northern Michigan University. Hey there, let me share my screen with you. Uh, my name is Allison, I'm from Northern Michigan. I just wanna share um, some basic facts about NMU. We'll talk a little bit about transfer opportunities as well. Uh, a little different from the schools that have already presented, we are a state school. 
We are up in the upper peninsula of Michigan. You can see on the map, it's directly north of Chicago, about six and a half hours. We are right on the lake. We have about 7,600 students that are enrolled. And so lots of different opportunities for you. Um, in addition, um, a couple of numbers over here that I think are really helpful to know, 96% of our graduates are employed within six months or have chosen to go on to grad school. And my favorite is that 91% of our grads say they would do it again. I just feel like that says something to you about the time and investment um, and kind of the overall view. So we do have 177 different majors available, lots of different opportunities. Um, we're known for anything relating to the outdoors. Our biggest majors are actually art and design, medicinal plant chemistry, um, sciences, pre-med, psychology, education, um, and similar type programs. So a lot of different opportunities for students. Um, our total cost here, you can see for an out-of-state student, we are looking at about $28,000 a year for room, board, and tuition. As a transfer student, you are not required to live on campus. Um, we certainly encourage it especially depending on what situation you have come from um, and what is available to you, kind of the experiences you've had. So it's certainly something we're willing to discuss. We have great automatic scholarships. Our out-of-state scholarships, whether it be for a transfer or a student coming out of high school, if you transfer in 12 or more credits, excuse me, with a 3.0, a B average or higher, we give you automatically $5,600 off every year, and we will actually add one of these other amounts as well. So as an out-of-state student, a 3.0 would actually qualify you for 6,600 6, off every year. Um, and it kind of goes up from there based on where you fit. We will accept uh, up to 90 credits transferred from a community college um, or from a technical school. And if you're at a regionally accredited four-year university, we have no limit on the transfers, uh, credits that we are able to take. We're very Easy going with that, we realize that we are not trying to slow your process down any and we'll fit things in as best that we can in order to be able to help you. Um, you can see the residence halls here. Again, it's not a requirement, but our residence halls are all suite style rooms. So sharing a bathroom um, and it is Tempur-Pedic mattresses, ceiling fans, granite countertops. It's a very comfortable uh, place to live. In addition, we have on-campus apartments and a lot of students will live in the community right near campus as well. Um, we do offer sports. We have men's division one hockey, division two for everything else. So a wide variety available to you um, and they are always looking for student interest. We do offer some club sports and other opportunities as well as 300 different activities and groups. We're a little small on the Greek system. We only have 10% of our students that are in our fraternities and our sororities, but it is an option if it's something you're really interested in. One thing that we've added in this year uh, with the virtual setting is an opportunity to specifically learn about transfer opportunities. And so we have what we're calling Transfer 101. Um, there's a couple of dates still left for that, but you also could set up a visit at any time to talk either virtually um, or in person on campus with some of our staff. We are on campus in person for classes almost entirely at this point. Um, we really have prided ourselves on trying to keep that going as best we can. Um, in order to get in, we would like to see you transfer in with at least a C average. Um, if a course did not have a C average, we will not, uh, excuse me, did not have a C in the course, we would not accept that as a transfer credit. Um, we, but we would also accept anything you may have taken previously as an AP exam or a CLEP exam. So um, lots of different opportunities there. We are enrolling admissions, so there's no deadline. You send it in to us, you hear back from us within a couple of weeks. Obviously, as a transfer student, it, the process is a little lengthier, but we're really willing to work with you. So anytime that you're interested in reaching out, we'd be happy to talk through things with you. Um, on the screen here, you can see both our transfer website, but also my information and my colleagues information. We're both here based in the Chicago area full time for the university, but you're also welcome to reach out at any time online. We have a chat board that's available. You can talk to current students, admissions counselors. Um, as I said, set up a virtual visit, learn more specifics about the university. Um, just a lot of different opportunities. We would love to see you stay on a four year path, even if you have started Perhaps at a community college, we realize that that's important. We're also gonna really encourage um, internships and various opportunities. 
We do have small classes. Our average class size for a freshman student is only 26 to 28. Coming in as a transfer student, for the most part, you're gonna be talking 15 students or less. So you are very actively involved, getting to know the professors, getting to be a part of things and really become experienced in your major and also really kind of give yourself a little bit of an edge. So if there's anything else that I can possibly offer in terms of information or anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can always go to our website and get my contact information as well. Thank you very much. Questions can be submitted using the Q&A button uh, for any of our presenters right now. Next up, we will hear from the representative from Rockford University. Donna, you're muted. Okay, sorry, I'll start again. My name's Donna. I'm the uh, transfer counselor for Rockford University. Uh, I wanted to start today with just introducing you to the campus. We have about 150 acres of park-like um, campus. When you walk it around, there's a lot of green space. Uh, we even have an 18-hole disc golf course. We are easy to get to in Rockford, but still tucked back enough to enjoy the small campus atmosphere. Students who choose to live on campus have lots of choices. We have buildings called small houses, which fit about, 100, uh, about 40 students. We also have the Cummings Complex, which is a cluster of connected small houses connected, with, uh, connected by um, clearing air or central area. Um, we want the students to check um, to, to choose the housing community that works best for them. And you'll see all your options when you complete your housing forms. We also have different room types for students like the traditional double room with, that sleeps two students, singles, super singles, which have private bathrooms and suites, which are like many apartments that hold four students. We'd like to include everything up front. So parking is free. All students can bring a car if they would like. We also um, have free laundry. We have, we have approximately 1,300 students from around the country and the world. And um, we have very small classes, 10 to one. And then we also have 12 D3 athletic programs and a competitive esports program. Some of our resources that we offer to make sure that you're feeling comfortable and you're successful at Rockford University is uh, our Center for Learning Strategies. It's a tutoring and academic support center they offer small study groups and peer tutors for students committed to healthy grades. They also offer testing. Our career services prepares you with job seeking skills and helps connect you to employment on and off of the campus. A benefit of being in the city of Rockford is it's large enough to have lots of businesses, a large school district, big hospitals, and so on. So when you are looking for internships, um, and full-time jobs, they are right here. And odds are, if you've been working with the Career Center, you've already built those connections. Our Lang Health Center has nurses on staff, two social workers, and a doctor on call. You can reach out to them at any time. We have multiple study abroad options. Some are short-term, which are about two weeks, but we also offer um, full semesters with the exchange with in Japan, the UK, Sweden, and Spain. And one of our favorite things is the opportunity, student opportunity fund. Students apply to this fund for money to do more. They can apply for uh, study abroad, financial assistance to go see a production in Chicago, host a speaker on campus, and the list goes on and on. We currently have 80 majors and minors, so there's something for everyone. We also have rolling enrollment. Um, our GPA requirement for transfer students is a 2.3. We also require that the only classes that will um, transfer are a C or better unless you have an associate's degree and then you come in as all your general education uh, requirements fulfilled. The uh, application is free. We use a holistic assessment because we really want to get to know you so that you'll be successful on campus. 
Our tuition um, is 33,750 coming up for the next year. And then there's the room and board. You don't have to live on campus. Um, of our students, only 300 students live on campus. 99% of our students receive financial aid. Um, all full-time transfer students receive a merit scholarship based on their cumulative GPA ranging from 11 to $15,000 for PTK. You can also start looking for um, other small scholarships so that everything adds up to help pay for your, your tuition. So what about Rockford? We're one of the largest uh, cities in, in, in Illinois, so there's plenty to do in Rockford. We are also close to Chicago, Madison and Milwaukee, and we have museums. You can spend time hiking at our uh, large rock cut park, uh, melt your stress away in one of our top public uh, Japanese gardens in the United States, take on slides and lazy river at our Hurricane Harbor, enjoy motor sports at our Speedway, or even enjoy a semi-pro hockey or baseball game. There's always something to do at Rockford University. If you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat. Otherwise, um, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I'll reiterate that questions can go in the Q&A. You can ask those at any time. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Chicago State University. Um, I'm trying to show my video, but it doesn't let me. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I feel like everyone does such a good job going real quick. So I'm going to try my best. Um, just go ahead and share my screen here with you. Okay, well, thank you so much for um, being here today. We hope you're enjoying everything and every and listening to everyone. Uh, my name is Alejandra. Please feel free to call me Alex. I'm the transfer relations specialist here at Chicago State University. Some quick facts about Chicago State. Um, we have about 2,600 students enrolled. We have a 10 to 1 student teacher ratio, which makes us a medium sized campus. I am a CSU alum, so um, I definitely can attest to the 10 to 1 student teacher ratio being very beneficial. Um, we have 15 NCAA Division I sports, one residence hall, more than 80 student organizations. If you don't see one, you can um, make one yourself. Um, we actually have 30, start one, I'm sorry, start one. And we have 36 states represented and 28 countries represented, which speaks on our diversity and 153 years of academic excellence. Real quick, RISE Academy, um, it is available for our transfer students with less than 24 credit hours. If they do complete this program, they get a full year for free, um, which includes tuition, campus healthcare plan, textbooks, and a personal laptop. Um, if, if they're interested in applying, you can apply. Um, the last day to apply is June 15th, and then Rise Academy would begin July 6th, and then you would start school for the fall semester in August, of course. Our academics, we have the College of Arts and Sciences, Business, Education, Health Sciences, Pharmacy, Graduate School, Division of Continuing Education. Ooh, let me move this um, Zoom right here. Um, and just to quickly elaborate, College of Arts and Sciences is our largest college. We do have pre-professional tracks such as pre-medicine, pre-law, pre-dental, pre-engineering, and pre-pharmacy. We have tons of other majors under the College of Arts and Sciences, but I definitely like to highlight our um, pre-professional tracks. And of course, we have award-winning faculty. College of Business, we have concentrations in accounting, supply chain management, finance, marketing, management, information systems, and management. And you can choose to make yourself more marketable with a minor in entrepreneurship, human resources, sales, and cybersecurity. And also um, the College of Business does offer study and work abroad opportunities in Ghana. College of Education is our landmark college. Um, we did start off as a teacher's college um, back in 1867. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, uh, in 2019, we actually had a 100% pass rate right, in the initial uh, Illinois teacher licensure um, exam. And then we have 100% job placement for educational professionals after licensing, of course, and uh, tons of placement services and a deep connection to Chicago. For our College of Health Sciences, we have public health, health information administration, nursing, and occupational therapy. We also have 100% job placement rate after certification and licensing and more than 150 clinical rotations and a small student to teacher ratio. In general, we have a small student to teacher ratio, but our professional programs have um, more individualized programs as well. 
College of Pharmacy, if you're interested, it is a six year pathway to PharmD. So if you're thinking of transferring, um, there are definitely some requirements that you do have to meet. Um, we are number one in graduating minorities in the Midwest. So uh, great college to be a part of. Um, and we also have diverse faculty to go along with that. We do have graduate programs if you're interested in continuing your education after you receive your bachelor's degree. A little quick outside of the classroom, um, we do have um, several offices that can assist you, like the LGBTQ plus resource center, women's resource center, African American male resource center. Every center has something different to offer and definitely get involved in these because um, you can definitely expand your knowledge about um, you know, the culture and just um, giving back to your community in general. Um, we do have sports, as I mentioned, we are division one and we are part of the Western Athletic Conference. Um, Altogether, we have the same sports for women and uh, men, except volleyball, which is only for women. We do have our honors college for transfers. Your deadline is June 15th. As long as you have more than 12 credit hours and a 3.35 GPA, um, you would be eligible to apply. Um, our residence hall, you are able to dorm if you are interested, is not a requirement. Currently at the moment, um, it's 3,000 per room. And um, our requirements 2.0 on a 4.0 scale. Um, we are waiving the application fee, so you don't have to worry. We're kind of like enrolling admission, but we do like to set deadlines to assure our students um, uh, get all their documents in. And we are waiving the, I'm sorry, we are uh, test optional for this semester. We're still thinking about for next semester, but you do not have to turn in SAT scores as well. Um, we do have an on-site admissions coming on April 19th. So if you're interested, I'm going to put my email in the chat and you can always email me um, to be a part of this event. All you need to do is complete your application and turn in your transcripts. We are at $312 per credit hour, extremely affordable. I graduated debt-free from Chicago State and 96% of our students receive financial aid at CSU. If you're looking to go part-time, you're about 4,100. If you're looking to go full-time, you're about 6,800. Of course, that's before um, tuition, um, financial aid. Some quick scholarships, we do offer aim high to transfer students. So definitely um, apply early because it is applied automatically. We are part of CRCP. Therefore, if uh, you want to work and go to school at the same time, definitely consider this program and it is DACA friendly. You get paid um, to work and additionally, you get money to go to school. Lastly, for um, our um, City College students, we uh, we do honor the STAR scholarship. So please let us know if you are a STAR scholar. And that is it for me. Does anybody have any questions? Um, let me go into my, my q and If anybody has any questions, you can always email us or give us a call. I'm gonna put my information in the chat. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. And questions can be submitted at any time using the Q&A button as well. And up next, we will hear from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. All right, there we go. And let me just share my screen here. And I will be filling in for Mark today. Okay. So hello everyone, thanks for having me. My name is Ariana Dubitiak and I'm a transfer admissions counselor here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I'm also an alumna and former transfer student. So I will go ahead and start with UW-Madison by the numbers. So we are a campus of there are over 30,000 undergraduate students with over a thousand of those also being transfer students. Um, transfer students are an important part of our community. They often come with backgrounds or experiences that contribute to the diversity in our community. So whether you are a returning adult student, veteran student, traditional I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. We can't see the PowerPoint. You can't see the PowerPoint? No. Oh, okay, thank you, sorry. All right, <laughs> she's jumping again. on to say the same thing. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Um, let me share my screen again. And are you are you able to see? Oh, here we yeah, we're seeing the uh, wrong screen. There you okay. go. That's are you it. able to see it now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Don't mean to cut into time. Okay, so I'll just go back here. Um, so back to our numbers. 
So like I was saying, uh, the more time you spend on campus, the more you do see that we have students from over 120 plus countries and representing all 50 states. Um, we also have a 20 to one student faculty ratio. Uh, so definitely some extra academic support there for our students. So the Wisconsin ideas are guiding principle that an education from UW-Madison is meant to benefit those beyond the classroom. So both nationally and across the world, um, you'll find that we incorporate this into everything that we do and that's reflected in some of those stats here. Um, but I do wanna highlight, we are ranked eighth nationally for research. So our students do have opportunities to engage in, engage in research, no matter what their major is. So whether that's developing their own or joining something that's ongoing, research really is available to students um, in every department on campus. Um, also, this is reflected in our volunteers that go into the Peace Corps. Students find ways to serve our community through campus, but also once they graduate as well. What the screen is showing here um, is our different schools and colleges. So we have over 125 majors to choose from among our different schools and colleges within the university. What this means is that the opportunities for academic growth at UW-Madison are limitless. And essentially here is our admissions philosophy. So our admissions philosophy is that we have a holistic process. So what this really means is that we look at all aspects of your application. There's no benchmark that gains you admission or no perfect test score, or concrete minimum alone that's going to guarantee someone admission. Um, and while academic excellence does weigh most heavily, we do consider all parts of the application as a part of our holistic review. Um, while we are a competitive institution, we consider a student's application in the context of where they have been educated. Um, really, we want to get to know the student academically and as a member of our community. So we want to know what you're involved with, um, what you're passionate about, and why UW-Madison is a good fit. So I do wanna spend a good amount of time just talking about our application process. You can see here the deadlines for determining what you're applying. So know that applications with all materials must be received by these deadlines. So for fall priority decision, that's February 1st, fall regular decision, that's March 1st, and spring regular decision, that is October 1st. Again, you'll want to have the application and all materials submitted by the according date. Um, and these dates are the same from year to year. So if you're applying in 2022, you'll wanna mark these dates on your calendar, depending on when you plan to apply. Transfer students do use the UW system application to apply, and there's a $60 application fee for which we have waivers if you qualify. Um, and then you can see other requirements on this screen here as well. So we do require all transcripts from anywhere you've attended. On your transcripts, we look at your courses, considering the breadth across disciplines, rigor, appropriate preparation for major, your grades, trends, and patterns. Um, there are two essays as a part of the application as well. So the first inquiring about your academic and personal achievements and the second asking why UW-Madison. Um, we also evaluate your involvement and we understand that this can look different from student to student. So we realize that a working parent or veteran may have something different than the traditional college student. And we also consider that the pandemic could have limited students' options. So students can include extracurriculars, but also hobbies, work experience, and projects on this part of the application. Then there's a letter of recommendation, which should be from an academic source. So someone who can speak to your academic ability. Um, if you've been out of school for a number of years um, or you've been in the military, we would definitely accept a letter of recommendation from a commanding officer or a supervisor as well. As far as test scores go, we do require the TOEFL and IELTS scores for international applicants unless English was the language for all four years of high school or if you have completed an English composition um, course at the college level. I'll add here that the SAT and ACT are not required for transfer students. Um, if you have a score that you are really happy about, you're definitely welcome to provide that, but again, it is not required. And then finally, I'll just quickly talk about financing your education. So I will point out here that the actual cost of a UW-Madison education varies from student to student, depending on the individual circumstances. So you want to take into account your spending habits, where you purchase materials, where you live, et cetera. I recommend using a resource on our website called the Net Price Calculator. It's a tool that gives you an idea of what you would um, pay given uh, your specific situation. So with that said, we do have a large number of our students receiving financial aid, and this is something that I do really want to highlight the importance of filling out that FAFSA application, which does become available for students October 1st for the next academic year. Um, our financial aid office does also offer free workshops, so definitely check out their website if you are interested. And then scholarships at UW-Madison are different from the FAFSA, so they are a separate application. 
um, you'll want to be sure to check out the Wisconsin Scholarship Hub, which is essentially UW-Madison's one-stop shop um, to apply to different scholarships at UW-Madison, and you can apply to those scholarships even if you haven't heard an admissions decision yet. Um, and just wrapping that up, because I know we're getting close to time. So despite working remotely, our office is still answering phones, connecting via email, and hosting virtual events. We also meet with transfer students one-on-one, so if you have any questions, um, definitely please reach out. And then I thank you, and I will add some contact information in the chat as well. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask all of our representatives to come back on to cam uh, cameras and microphones and everything. And we'll do a quick little Q&A in the three and a half minutes we have left, which will be uh, excellent for the recording of this as people access it. I think we have everybody back on. And real quickly, I'm just going to ask uh, one question and have you answer in the same order that you presented. And that's a simple one. What advice would you give someone going through the transfer process right now? And we'll uh, start with the uh, representative from Loyola University, Chicago. Thank you. I think for me, the most important thing that I tell my students is focus on fit. You don't want to have to transfer twice or three times or a dozen. Um, find the school that's the right fit for you academically and financially and go for it. Dominican University. I would say start the process as early as you can. Um, if you're going to a community college first, you want to make sure that you complete an associate of arts degree. So the, uh, the core will transfer and you'll essentially be waived from most of the core requirements at the, uh, at the uh, receiving institution. And also look into your financial options early. File your FAFSA early, get that information out there. Look into scholarships, any outside scholarships as well. Northern Michigan University. Yeah, I would just say, make sure you don't feel like a failure. I actually transferred. It was a good decision for me at the time, but I remember feeling like I somehow had messed up my first decision. And I think just make the best of the situation you're given and jump into that new campus and just have a great experience. Rockford University. Well, I guess I would have to reiterate what everybody has already said, you know, it should be a good fit so you don't have to transfer again and make sure you start early and make sure you fill out your FAFSA in, in quickly so that you can get the best financial aid packages. Chicago State University. Just reiterating what my colleagues here are saying and um, just uh, to make sure to ask questions, ask as many questions as you can. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you and have a seamless transition and apply to any and all scholarships if possible. You can never have enough money to go to school. And last but not least, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Yes, so I would say the same of what everyone has already said, but I would also add to connect, connect, connect. Um, before you transfer, but also after you transfer um, here at the UW-Madison, we have a transfer transition program that specifically exists to um, meet with transfer students and still connect with transfer students even after they transfer. So make sure that you're connecting, you know, before you start the process while you're completing the process of transferring and even after you transfer, I think is really important. Well, I want to thank you all for sharing that advice and as well as all, all the great information about each of your institutions. I want to thank uh, our attendees for joining us and viewing the recording of this uh, session. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. This is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional sessions where you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Once again, thank you to all of our participants today. We appreciate uh, you taking the time to share great information and have a great rest of your Monday. Take care.